Okay, so I wanted to record a video on an article called Mainstream Science on Intelligence. It's an article from, uh, you can see it was printed in Wall Street Journal in um, 1994. And it's a response to the responses to the bell curve. The bell curve is a very controversial book about intelligence and uh, it has uh, many different uh, controversial chapters in it. But they were controversial because the public didn't know that much about it. So when journalists started reading about it, they are kind of perplexed and thought that it was bad science. Uh, so this is why, why um, let me find her name. Oh, uh, she's here. You can see uh, Linda Gottfriedson. She, um, she wrote this article. And then she sent it out to 100 uh, scientists. I think it was 100, yeah. And um, then 131, actually. 100 responded and 52, I think, 52 signed it. So uh, a lot of the people she sent it to, and the, these were scientists from psychology and genetics and scientific areas that, um, that study intelligence. So uh, a lot of them agreed that this was actually what we know and understand about intelligence. And it's just one page. So it's a great response. I think it's still very much readable. It's a great introduction to intelligence. And also because you have so many big names, let's look at some of them. Also, or Arthur Jensen, the greatest intelligence scientist of all time. Hardin is also someone uh, I have read about, I think. Gottfriedson, Hans Eysenck, okay, a lot of, uh, oh, also Cattell, Raymond Cattell, interesting. So uh, Thomas J. Broussard, a lot of interesting uh, people, a lot of interesting names that I know a lot about. Uh, David T. Lurken, Richard Lynn, also very, very famous, uh, Robert Plunin. Or very very famous uh, intelligence uh, scientist Philip Ruston. So these are Sandra Scar also. These are huge huge names in psychology. And uh, let's see, they have uh, 25 points they made in the article. And while it's not conclusive because it's still a short page, they do have a great points. And it's also a bit old, so we have a new findings, but they cannot include everything either way. Okay, intelligence is a general mental capability. Okay, and it's a broad mental capability. It's not just the grades you have, it's just not, not just the, how well you do at your job, it's everything. And the intelligence as they describe it is the G factor, so it's IQ. There's a curve too. And also you can test intelligence by different measures. Uh, so you have a vast variety of intelligence testing and they are all very, very different from each other, but they all um, measure the same thing, general intelligence factor, or IQ, also uh, measured by IQ. And these tests are not culturally biased. So one culture won't just get better results because they are a certain culture. And we don't know that much about brain processes underlying intelligence. And here to write that black Americans have an average IQ of 85, whites have an average IQ of 100. And uh, curiously enough, they don't write that much about Jews and Asians. They just say they have probably a higher uh, IQ than white people. And that's also true. Yeah, and it uh, of course predicts your education, education, occupational attend, uh, occupation, economic status, social outcomes. So it has a lot of predictability power and it's a very, very good trait to have. So being high intelligence is a great, great thing in a modern society, in an old society, in any kind of situation. It's a great thing. Yeah, it has advantage in all kind of decision making and reasonings. 
and the advantage could increase if life becomes more complex. And there are also some other traits you can have that can make you better or worse at the job. For example, let's see you lack an arm that makes you worse at certain jobs, right? So of course intelligence is not everything, it's just part of the traits you have. But it's still the best predictor of your grades and job status. Now its ability is very very high. Family members, uh, so you have siblings, vary uh, with uh, on average 12 IQ points because they have you still um, have genes from the mother and the father, so it's random what genes the siblings will get. Some one sibling can have some genes, another sibling can have other genes. So all siblings will not have exactly the same IQ. Uh, yes, we know that environment can influence IQ in different ways, uh, but we don't know how to manipulate it. So we know it's not 100% health ability. There's something that can influence IQ in one way or the other because we have studied the uh, monozygotic twins. So we know they're not exactly alike. They have a few differences, minor differences, but still some differences. And uh, but we don't know how to manipulate intelligence. So we cannot in any kind of way make one person more intelligent than another person. Even if we have monozygotic twins and we take one twin and uh, try to train him or make him more clever, that's, that's not something we can do. But we know that intelligence is somehow influenced from, uh, from our, our environment. And they uh, refuse to answer why uh, bell curves differ among racial ethnic groups. Maybe the science was not that concrete back in 1994. We now know it's uh, heritable, so it's genetics. But still, I don't think that um, as many scientists will, uh, will sign something like this because it's still a controversial topic, no matter if we know it or not. No matter if we are 100% certain, it's still a controversial subject. Very controversial. Yes, so uh, yeah, that's it. That's uh, kind of this uh, mini introduction to intelligence uh, written to, uh, to the public so they will understand what intelligence is and what mainstream science thinks about intelligence. It's a great introduction, a bit dated, and they, uh, they do pull some punches because they have to. That's uh, obvious because it's still, it's still something for the public. If you go to the scientific articles, if you go to the numbers and stuff like that, they will be more concrete and more direct. But this can, cannot be as hard hitting. It has to be a bit softer. So yeah, um, that's it. <laughs>